Hello everyone, my name's Lloyd Clark. I'm an employment lawyer here at Atwell Solicitors. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you today about the case of Fricker versus Ghana. So this was an interesting case in that it held that a female employee who was consistently called a good girl by her manager uh, constituted sexual harassment. This case is interesting because it shows that not only has language evolved over time and language that's acceptable in the workplace, um, but it has evolved in the sense that what was once probably considered to be acceptable is now considered sexual harassment. Um, it also, this case shows that the importance of witness evidence and ensuring that you keep contemporaneous records uh, of grievances and complaints that are raised by your staff. Um, in this case, uh, we had an employee, um, F, who was managed by A. Uh, a was a male uh, and he made it quite clear to the employee in question that he was attracted towards her uh, and he repeatedly called her good girl starting beginning in 2018 uh, and carrying through until the end of her employment in 2021. Uh, during this period she told him that she uh, took exception to this term but he persisted nonetheless. Uh, he also persisted uh, in touching her, trying to kiss her, uh, and telling her that he was going to join a dating website so that he could get a date with her. So it wasn't just limited in this instance to the uh, calling her a good girl, but there was other instances of sexual harassment. Um, subsequently, the employee complained to the employer about this and the manager left uh, under terms of a settlement agreement. The employee in question raised grievances. These grievances were handled poorly by the employer who didn't document any of the process uh, and told the employee in question that in fact she was guilty of flirting with the manager who had now subsequently left. Uh, the employee resigned and brought a claim for sexual harassment in the employment tribunal. The employment tribunal upheld her complaint uh, and held that such language in this current day and age could be considered a sexual slur. They also criticised the employer for not having any documentary evidence to support the investigations that they'd undertaken into her complaint or any other documentary evidence to support what they were saying. Perhaps a side point in a case like this, but still a very important one, is the fact that the employer tried to, tried to call their former employee as a witness. And this inevitably was the reason why the employer lost the case, because they were unable to call the manager as a witness to try and rebut those allegations that were being made against them and the manager himself. This is a situation which often happens when employees leave a business. There isn't any obligation on that employee in question to attend an employment tribunal, albeit an employer does have the option of obtaining a, a witness order compelling that individual to attend. These are very rarely given and they are expensive. So the lessons that are to be learned from a case like this are, you should monitor the language that's being uh, used in the working environment, particularly where it's from a manager to a subordinate. An employer should also look to keep records of any complaints raised, especially where they relate to sexual harassment, harassment or discrimination of any kind, and the importance of not jumping to conclusions when investigating a grievance. Uh, I hope this update has been helpful and if you have any questions on this case or employment law generally, please don't hesitate to contact me.